Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing this machine. Um, we've actually had this machine for quite some time, but uh, we recently upgraded it to the SL1S and we just wanted to um, kind of go over the differences. Full disclosure for the sake of transparency that we are not affiliated with Prusa in any particular way. Um, this video has not been sponsored at all. None of the opinions are influenced by anybody except for our own personal experience. So, like I said, we've had this machine for a little bit more than two years, which in technological terms means that it might be entering its old age phase, um, where I might be starting to consider thinking something new, something more up to date. But uh, that is not the case with this machine. The Prusa SL1 was designed like a tank, uh, featuring no small amount of machined aluminum, powder coated metal. Um, it's been said in numerous articles and reviews that this machine oozes craftsmanship, which I agree with is a very apt way of describing this machine. However, uh, for all that, this machine has also been designed with upgradability in mind, as is very typical with many of the Prusa machines. Um, slapping an S on the end seems like a very kind of Apple-esque way of saying marginal increase in performance or upgradability. And uh, so, so is that really the case? So is this machine even relevant at all? I guess we'll find out. So first of all, let's talk about our personal experience, which was with the upgrade kit. Um, as I said, this was an SL1 for a number of years, and now we've upgraded to the SL1S. So what comes in that kit? We did live stream the unboxing process of all the components, but I didn't upgrade it live or on camera really because I didn't really want to immortalize my tears and frustration trying to work within such a small space packed with so much technology. But let's go over those components anyway and kind of talk about what they are because I feel like a lot of people think that a screen is a screen or an LED is an LED or whatever. It, it is not the case. Um, this machine is designed with cream of the crop type components. So first of all, let's talk about the ever marketable uh, and continually misunderstood LCD panel of these printers. Did Prusa decide to go with 4K, 6K or 8K in this particular iteration? No, they stuck with 2560 by 1620p resolution. But they did change it from RGB to monochrome, which means that this screen now has a expected about 2000 hour life versus a 500 hour life. Where you may think that the 2K screen size is really underpowered, um, there's actually a very good reason why they decided to go with this. And it has everything to do with that speed moniker. The 2560 by 1620p monochrome screen this time around really doesn't sound very impressive on its face, um, but they really did choose this resolution for a very good reason. At the 5.96 inch screen size, the pixel density really doesn't matter too much between 2.6K and 4K. The difference is about 25%, which yeah, it's a negligible upgrade, but frankly, you're gonna have to get in there with a microscope to see that kind of detail anyway. And if you had a 4K or above screen, all the circuitry that goes in between those pixels is going to block more UV light, meaning that that speed moniker doesn't necessarily apply anymore because it won't be able to print nearly as fast. Moving on to the build plate, they've actually managed to make the build plate size 25% larger, which I think is really impressive. That's not something I'd expect to see on any other kind of machine upgrade. Usually you're kind of stuck within a certain parameter but that they were able to increase the size is just awesome. They've also sloped the top so that resin can't pool on the flat surfaces. I personally didn't have too much of an issue with the flat ones, but they listened to their clients or their customers and uh, they did slope it and it looks fine. I like it. Going along with that new build plate size, we did have to get a new tank, a new resin vat. Um, this is uh, arguably the, the least favorable upgrade, I think, of the entire machine. Um, on the SL1S, we had aluminum resin vats that were milled. They were really high quality. I loved them. They had uh, really nice screws for changing the FEPs. Everything was really solid. This one is injection molded plastic with graphite infused. 
Um, that means that it's actually still conductive. So there is a resin sensor just down here that senses the level, the resin level in the tank, and that is incredibly useful. We'll talk more about those features in a little bit. Um, but this tank, the plastic is, the, the walls are a little bit thinner, and I don't think there's any, really any other dimensional change aside from those walls, just to accommodate the size of the build plate. Um, I just hate it. In terms of installing FEPs on the bottom, the screws are much smaller, they strip easier. I, I just didn't enjoy the experience. So moving on, why is this machine called Speed? Because of this, one of the most important components of the entire machine and virtually every MSLA printer out there. It has been updated from a much smaller array on the SL1 with a reflector system to this comparably monstrous assembly right here. They've increased the number of UV LEDs on the PCB, changed the flow of the LED cooling fan, and they've also had this custom-made lens array for the very top, which aligns all of the UV rays to be perfectly parallel and nice and straight when they enter the masking screen. This ensures a very highly accurate print quality because the light travels perfectly straight rather than being bounced around on a reflector. So only the resin that is exposed from the screen is being exposed at all uh, to the light, which means that there is virtually no light bleeding whatsoever and prints are highly accurate. Incidentally, this also allows for the UV light, A, being more powerful, uh, about four times more powerful actually. Um, it also allows for very greater penetration of the UV rays into the resin. Um, in the Prusa Live number 28, where they first talked about this machine, um, Joe actually brings out uh, a test model. It actually happens to be the entire print height, the Z-axis height, and they were able to print that in less than 50 minutes, I believe, or less than one hour, I think it was 57 minutes or something, at an incredibly high layer height. I believe it was 300 micron or something like that. That's kind of bonkers if we're considering talking about like 0.05 millimeter layer height typically. So for very linear objects, the light penetrates much deeper, much faster, and you can print incredibly fast. The LEDs used in this unit are cream of the crop when it comes to UV light output. Not all LEDs are produced the same from manufacturing. So when they go through the testing process, these LEDs that were selected are the top of the line, the best of the best. And then they've been calibrated for peak performance and evenness across the entire PCB. And a little side note here, this spacer that's been printed uh, between the lens array and the PCB, this is Prusa's new PC blend carbon fiber filament. This stuff can handle the heat and light produced uh, very easily for a very long time. This is gonna be a very durable part. So included with this kit is what's called a boost board, which uh, changes the power input to an external power source rather than an internal one. This power source is actually the same one that comes with the Prusa Mini Plus. So in terms of scalability, it worked really well. So lastly, before we get into the opinion part about this review, let's mention the price. The upgrade kit uh, sells for $399 USD which if you already own the printer, I think is a pretty good deal. However, if you don't own a machine already, then Prusa will sell it to you for $19.99, so about 2,000 bucks, which I agree is quite a large bill to swallow. In perspective though, the $399 for the upgrade kit is really quite good considering everything that's in the kit. If I were to go through the Prusa website and total up all the parts that were publicly available, which by the way, are not all the parts that are actually included in the kit. This includes the UV LED, power supply, screen, tank, and build plate. The total would come to 383.96 USD. So just at retail value, they're not really making any money off of this. Um, and that's of course not including the other parts that come with it. It was mentioned very briefly in the Prusa Live number 28. I know I keep referring back to this. I think you should just go watch it, frankly. It's quite good. There's a lot of really good information in that particular live. Um, they state that the entire bill for the SL1 and the SL1S is actually more than the retail value for the i3 MK3S Plus. The 2000 bucks is really going quite far. You're getting really good value for the money. You got to remember that cost is what they are paying, not the retail value. 
So what do I think of this machine? Well, I think this machine is amazing. Um, obviously, we've been running it for a number of years. And aside from a couple of screen changes, a few FEP changes, uh, largely this machine has been maintenance free. And it's been printing at a very high standard for quite a long time. The print quality is incredibly good and has just gotten better and faster now with this new upgrade. I can now fit more on the bed. I can print faster. There's been really nice firmware updates as well that have come out. Um, the more public release of Prusa Connect or Prusa Link, I'm not sure which one it's called now, um, has been incredibly useful for me. Uh, this machine does have built-in Wi-Fi, so I, I'm able to just kind of like go into my browser and drag a file over and it prints it. It's done. Um, I can also monitor th these prints on my phone. I could even start prints on my phone if I had them available. Now, granted, you are going to have to be able to make sure that the lid is closed and the build plate is empty and there's resin in the vat, but uh, I mean, it's still really cool to be able to do that. This machine's also capable over Wi-Fi of updating its own firmware uh, to beta versions if you want a certain feature early, and it also has a very easy downgrading feature if in case that beta doesn't happen to work. It can also download its own example models, including a resin calibration model, where it actually has eight different models on the bed, and it generates a different uh, exposure time for each one. So you can dial in brand new resins and make your own printer profile very quickly, accurately, and you know, it's just an amazing feature that I don't see on any other machine. On the back here, there's also a replaceable activated carbon filter, which um, we find to be awesome because in our current little print space here, uh, we don't notice any resin fumes pretty much at all. Now, granted, a lot of our resins are castables, which are said to be low odor, and they tend to be. Um, either way, it's really cool that they have that option at all. There is a hose adapter option that we can fit onto the back that's free to download from PrusaPrints.org. Um, where you could just have the ventilation go straight up and out and you never have to deal with fumes at all. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this machine. I know that this is one that everyone loves to hate on. Uh, I think that everyone is comparing it to some of the other more budget-friendly machines from Elgu, Anycubic, Frozen, etc. And honestly, like, this machine isn't trying to compete with those. It never has been. Prusa has never been pushing it towards that audience. Their audience is more for professional business use um, in dental labs, medical labs, things like that, where speed is very important. Resolution, of course, is important, but we've already talked about that. And, you know, th that's their target market. And in that market, reliability and consistency is really much more important. And that comes with build quality, which costs. Anyway, that's just my, my two cents, but as a business owner, I love this machine and I'm gonna continue using it for the next foreseeable, at least two years, I think, with this upgrade kit. So that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I will be reviewing more printers down the line. Um, this is just like a little sneak peek. Uh, many of you may have, if you follow this channel, know that we already have the Mars 3. That'll be coming up very shortly, probably within a week or two. And we have many other printers lined up from more high-end brands, so to speak, um, where, as I've said, this machine is trying to compete with those. We're going to go look at those machines and see how well it handles against them. So as per usual, if you enjoyed this content, please give us a like on this video. And if you really want to see more of this content, hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling generous, we do have a merch bar somewhere here down below, up above, I'm not sure, uh, where we have a few t-shirts that we've designed ourselves. And um, if you do need more one-on-one -on -one help, if you have this or any other kind of machine and you need help with casting or, you know, anything really, 3D printed oriented, um, feel free to hit us up in the comment section or consider joining our uh, membership program where I can help you on a much more one-on-one -on -one basis. So that's been it. I will see you guys in the next video.